Hi, I'm Lee McDonald. I'm one of the interventional cardiologists here at South Denver Cardiology. We're going to talk today a little bit about aortic stenosis. Your val you have four valves in your heart, and one of them is called the aortic valve. The aortic valve is under the most pressure. The main pumping chamber of your heart, the left ventricle, is squeezing every second of every minute you're alive. While you're asleep, while you're a baby, while you're happy, while you're sad, your heart is working. Every time you say, gosh, I just need a break, your heart is actually working that entire time. So this muscle is incredible. It's really amazing if you think about it. And that aortic valve has been opening and closing every second of every minute that you've been alive for your entire life. For a 75 year old, that means that your heart, this valve has opened and closed many billions of times. When I talk to my patients, I, th I tell them to think about that, how amazing it is. If you think about a door opening and closing a, million, a billion times, it's really hard to believe that it functions so well. But just like anything that opens and closes a billion times, sometimes this valve can have a problem. There are two major problems that can it have. One is where it leaks and blood leaks backwards through it, but the other one is it becomes stiff. Just like our joints become stiff, our knees and our elbows, the aortic valve can get stiff and the valve stops opening as easy. When that happens, we call that aortic stenosis. The first thing that usually happens, because this valve is right up here in the front of your chest and it is under so much pressure because the heart is squeezing so hard, the first thing that sometimes is noticed in a patient is that we say that we can hear a murmur. Murmurs are, there are many different types of murmurs, but this is one of the most distinctive. So if, you're, uh, if your doctor says, I hear a murmur, that may be that you have a valvular problem. Sometimes that can mean that it's a mild problem, sometimes it can be more serious. What generally happens after we get uh, or we hear a murmur, we recommend an echocardiogram. An echocardiogram is an ultrasound of the heart where we can actually look at the valves in more detail and see what is going on. So specifically aortic stenosis. This is one of the valvular problems um, where the aortic valve is not opening that easily. And we talked about it um, uh, as a problem. And in many patients, if it is a mild problem, they can have a murmur and we may see that in echo, but there's nothing that we need to do that doesn't require treatment. If it progresses beyond mild, then it can, can become moderate. We start to watch those people closer and we become very concerned when it becomes severe. If you have severe aortic stenosis, um, that becomes a reason why we want to see you as a cardiologist and make sure that we're doing the right things for you. Severe aortic stenosis is a life-threatening problem if you are having symptom, symptoms. What I mean by that is if you have severe aortic stenosis and you start to develop symptoms, and the most common symptoms from aortic stenosis are shortness of breath or heart failure, chest pains, or dizzy spells or passing out. If you are having those in combination with aortic stenosis, we know that, that this is the time to act. We want to do something for your aortic valve at this time. One of the uh, most exciting things that has happened in all of cardiology, really in all of medicine, is um, something called TAVR, T-A-V-R. What that stands for is transcatheter aortic valve replacement. For many, many years, when patients had a bad aortic valve, a failing aortic valve, our only option was open heart surgery. Open heart surgery, you're put on a heart-lung bypass machine, your sternum is cut open, your heart is stopped, the valve is cut out, and a new one is put in. Obviously, um, that surgery worked very well for those patients, but the recovery time was significant, and there were other parts of the surgery uh, that were um, that were challenging for patients. But over the last decade, really this technology called TAVR has developed and it has um, been perfected and it has made it so that we can um, really offer this to a lot of patients, really in all age ranges. And basically what we're able to do is take a valve and collapse it into a small tube 
take it up to your heart and put it in the location where the old aortic valve is and then expand it so that you have a brand new functioning aortic valve. At the beginning, TAVR was tested only in very sick patients, patients that couldn't have open heart surgery. But over the last decade, trials have come out testing TAVR against very high risk patients for surgery and, and a surgical aortic valve, high risk surgical patients, intermediate and even low risk. And the most recent trials of TAVR versus open surgery for low risk patients have shown TAVR to be equal to, if not better, in many of the most important things that we monitor for. So the exciting thing that has happened over the last decade is people may have heard, well, I heard TAVR was only for older patients or for these type of patients. Really, TAVR now is a possibility for really almost everyone um, who needs a new aortic valve that has aortic stenosis. So let's talk about TAVR if you have to have this procedure. The procedure again is done through the leg. Most places, our center included, um, are ones now that you don't even actually have to go completely asleep. You're given some sedation. There's an anesthesiologist who makes sure that you're relaxed and um, not feeling any pain. We numb up your groin and we're able to put a few IVs in your leg, including the main one that we're gonna carry the valve up to your heart. This is collapsed into a small tube about the size of a straw. It's amazing, really, if you think about it, that we can collapse it that much. But we're able to collapse it and then push it up to the location inside your heart. I've got a model here just to give you a demonstration of kind of what it looks like. And this is uh, a heart that has been cut open. And as you can see, um, the valve, this valve is actually in place. Many people ask me, well, what happens to the old valve? The old valve is actually just crushed or basically pinned up against the wall, if you think about it. So those leaflets are actually just pinned in the open position. So basically the valve though comes in and we're able to take it in and um, obviously this would be coming up from your leg and we're able to blow up this balloon which you can see is right here and then when we deflate the balloon we're able to then pull the deflated balloon out and what's left behind is this valve that with the leaflets inside now you can see kind of the yellow leaflets and they are opening and closing. So this is done while your heart's actually beating um, it's amazing. There's one type where we use a balloon. There's another one where we actually can just roll it out and it has some properties that allow it to kind of pin itself into position. Um, the whole procedure itself takes usually about one hour. Um, again, at the conclusion, everything is taken out. We put a little stitch under your skin where, where we've gone in and most people leave with just a Band-Aid on their leg. And um, most people um, then are able to go to a, to a uh, telemetry floor. You don't need to go to the intensive care unit. And then most people go home the next day after this amazing procedure. People immediately after TAVR feel significantly better. It's an, it's an exciting procedure because we take a person who has a severe valvular problem and basically put a perfectly good new functioning valve in. So I tell people that aortic stenosis, if it, you have severe aortic stenosis and symptoms, this is a life-threatening problem as we mentioned before. 50% of the people, if they're untreated, will die within, it, uh, within it two years. So the mortality rate from severe aortic stenosis, meaning the number of people that die, is worse than any type of cancer that has spread throughout your body. When people hear about lung cancer or other types of cancer, they think, wow, that's terrible. Well, severe aortic stenosis with, uh, with symptoms is more serious or as serious um, a risk for, for people that, you know, compared to any of those. And the exciting thing though is with a new aortic valve that's put in again through this procedure through the leg, we are then able to essentially cure patients from this problem. They're able then um, to go on and resume a healthy, active life. Um, there are many famous people who have had this and are back you know, doing all the things they were doing before. You really have no limitations after this surgery um, or after this procedure. And it really is pretty amazing. Within a few weeks, people are very active and feeling well. And um, 
you know, like I said, it's one of the more exciting things that has come around in cardiology and in, and in medicine in general in the, in the last several decades. Here at South Denver Cardiology, I'm very proud. We have one of the strongest, best um, structural programs in the entire state. We are um, taking care of patients um, from all over the state and uh, we have a very sophisticated program. Uh, we have a significant team of multiple cardiologists, cardiac surgeons, nurses, nurse practitioners um, that are all here trying to help patients with severe aortic stenosis. We take this very serious and are very excited to offer this uh, to our patients and to the community. I think um, if you have a structural problem or have significant aortic stenosis, we'd be happy to help you, happy to see you, and, and hopefully um, you would be a candidate for this, this exciting procedure.